Tori Jenna Kartin was the great Kartin and regent of the Mongol Empire from the death of her husband Ogadei Khan in 1241 until the election of her eldest son Gyuk Khan in 1246. Background Born in the Naiman tribe, Torijena was given as wife to Kudu, the noble of the Merkit clan at first, but Rashid al-Din Hamid Ani named her first husband as Dare Usun of the Merkits. When Genghis conquered the Merkits in 1204, he gave Torijena to Ogadei as his second wife. While Ogadei's first wife had no sons, Torijena gave birth to five sons. She eclipsed all of Ogadi's wives and gradually increased her influence among the court officials. But Torijena still resented Ogadi's officials and the policy of centralizing the administration and lowering tax burdens. Torijena sponsored the reprinting of the Taoist canon in North China. Through the influence of Torijena, Ogade appointed Abderrahman as tax farmer in China, Great Khartoum of the Mongol Empire. Soon after Ogade died in 1241, at first power passed to the hands of Mok, one of Genghis Khan's wives, who Ogade inherited, with the support of Chagatai and her sons. Torijena assumed complete power as regent in spring 1242 as Great Khartoum and dismissed her late husband's ministers and replaced him with her own, the most important of whom was another woman, Fatima, a Tajik or Persian captive from the Middle Eastern campaign. She was a Shiite Muslim who deported Shiite shrine of Mesh to Mongolia. She tried to arrest several of Ogadi's main officials. Her husband's chief secretary, Chinkai, and the administrator, Mimud Yalavach fled to her son Kodan in North China while Turkestani administrator Masud Beg fled to Batu Khan in Russia. In Iran, Torijena ordered Kor Guz arrested and handed over to the widow of Chagatai, whom he had defied. The Chagatai at Khan Karahulagu executed him. Torijena appointed Argan Aqa of the Oirat as governor in Persia. She put Abderrahman in charge of general administration in North China and Fatima became even more powerful at the Mongol court. These actions led the Mongol aristocrats into a frenzy of extortionate demands for revenue, role in Mongol conquests. Torijena had friendly relations with Ogadi's commanders in China. The conflicts between the Mongols and the Song troops took place in the areas of Chengdu. Torijena sent her envoys to negotiate peace, but Song imprisoned them. The Mongols captured Hangzhou and invaded Sichuan in 1242. She ordered Zhang Ru and Chagan to attack the Song dynasty. When they pillaged the Song territory, the Song court sent a delegation to cease fire. Chagan and Zhang Ru returned north after the Mongols accepted the term. During the reign of Ogadei, the Seljuks of Rum offered friendship and a modest tribute to Chormakan, under Caicos Raw II. However, the Mongols began to pressure the Sultan to go to Mongolia in person, give hostages, and accept a Mongol Darfarchi. Mongol raids began in 1240. The Seljuk Sultan Caicos Raw assembled a large army to meet them. The king of Cilicia and Armenia was required to produce 1,400 lances and the Greek emperor of Nicaea 400 lances. Both rulers met the Sultan in Kayseri to negotiate details. The Grand Komnenos of Trebizond contributed 200, while the young Ayyubid prince of Aleppo supplied 1,000 horsemen. In addition to these, Caicos Raw commanded the Seljuk army and irregular Turkmen cavalry, though both had been weakened by the Barbarishic rebellion. However, Beju and his Georgian auxiliaries crushed them at the Battle of Kozadag in 1243. After that battle, the Sultanate of Rum, the Empire of Trebizond and the Lesser Armenia quickly declared their allegiance one by one to the Mongol Empire ruled by Torij and the Mongol troops under General Beidou probed the forces of Abbasid Iraq and Ayyubid ruled Syria in 1244-46. 
Gaiac's coronation. She was in exercise of power in a society that was traditionally led only by men. She managed to balance the various competing powers within the empire, and even within the extended family of the descendants of Genghis Khan, over a five-year period in which she not only ruled the empire, but set the stage for the ascension of her son Gayuk as Great Khan. During Toregen's reign, foreign dignitaries arrived from the distant corners of the empire to her capital at Karakorum or to her nomadic imperial camp. The Seljuk Sultan came from Turkey, as did representatives of the Caliph of Abbasid in Baghdad. So did two claimants to the throne of Georgia, David Ulu, the illegitimate son of the late king, and David Narin, the legitimate son of the same king. The highest-ranking European delegate was Alexander Nevsky's father, Grand Prince Yaroslav Vsevolodovich of Vladimir and Suzdal who died suspiciously just after dining with Torij and a cartoon. The Mongols practiced polygamy. Ogade Khan's favorite son was Kochu, who was his through another wife, and he had nominated Kochu's son Simon to succeed him after his father suddenly died in China in 1237. But some sources mention that Koch was a son of Torij and she did not want little Simon to succeed. Torajena opposed the choice in favor of Gayuk, but despite the enormous influence she had on him, she was unable to persuade Ogade to change his selection. She did, however, achieve her aims through cunning. When the lesser Khans appointed her regent after her husband's death, she appointed her favorites to high positions in the imperial household and initiated what was to be a successful scheme to elevate her son Gayuk. Torijena managed to keep the Kuralte from being held until it was sure her son Gayuk was favored by the majority. Torijena passed power on to, to her son Gayuk in 1246. She retired west to Ogadi's appanage on the Emil. Despite her role in ensuring Gayuk's selection as Kagan, the relationship between Torijena and her son eventually collapsed. Gayak's brother Coden accused Fatima of using witchcraft to damage his health. When Coden died a few months later, Gayu insisted that his mother hand Fatima over for execution. Torajena threatened her son Gayuk that she would commit suicide to spite him. Gayak's men seized Fatima and put her to death by sewing up all of her orifices and dumping her into water. Torajan's supporters in the imperial household were simultaneously purged. Within 18 months of Fatima's death, Torajena herself died under still unexplained circumstances.